Добре вечер. Привет. It is Yad David Splitnikov here with another exciting edition of As the Blade Turns. In case you are living under a rock, earlier this week, champion choreographer, coach, and beach, Daniel Gleikenhaus gave an interview after the latest stage of the Grand Prix where he talked about the beloved Aljana Kasternaya and set the internet ablaze with his words. We can read here a translation from FC Gossips, The True Angels of Our Time. We read, they ask, Aljana Kasternaya, Danny G, our favorite. The interviewer asks, how do you assess her future prospects, judging by how she did the triple axel? What is she working on now? Daniel, on all the other jumps. <laughs> can you tell more specifically? Aljona posted a very kind, sincere post, where she thanked us for working with her. If it was only shown more in the training process than in gratitude on Instagram. We do not need gratitude from her. Our task is to help her reach her maximum. And we succeed, she will show herself in all her glory. At the moment, this is not her maximum. I think everyone understands this. What is wrong with Aljona's training process? The number of run-throughs does not correspond to the rest of the athletes in the group. She doesn't work hard enough? Why is this happening? Let Elyon herself answer this. I cannot get into her head. But does she come to all workouts? Thank God, yes. Almost. So does Elyon have problems with motivation? It is hard to say that this is motivation. She needs to understand herself. People are all different. Not all of us can do the same thing every day and turn off our emotions. Work for repetition. Doing the same thing. This is the complexity of our sport. To go to the competitions in a beautiful dress, please the audience and skate for it. This is a holiday for them. But doing it every day in training is the hardest part. Is there a problem in contact? between Aljona and the coaching staff? No, there is no problem with contact. We are discussing this. She understands it perfectly. The question is how to help her with this, in this routine, so that she can squeeze the maximum of herself every day. Because when she goes to competitions every day, she always does more than she shows in training. Is the third place in Canada logical and natural? It is logical and natural. But that's not what we want. Because we talked to her about the need to skate with two axles in the free program and not rely on one. Aljona's component scores became lower. What is the reason? Her component scores became lower because she does not do the choreography and transitions completely. She does not do all this in full strength because she understands that she cannot spend much energy on it in order to reach the end of the program and make all the jumps. See, once again, he is telling us that if you do not like Kasternaya's program, it is not a fault of the choreographer, just like it was not a fault of Shailen Bourne if people did not like the programs last season. This is Kasternaya herself, and this is now the second interview where Gleikenhaus has badmouthed his star pupil. You see, this is very reminiscent of other coaches, like Bella Curoli, who told us that, you know, Betty Aquino... She was had a broken back because she was lazy, and she was injured because she was not working hard enough, which is why she had a broken back and a screw in her knee during the 1992 Olympics. This is, you know, the great reason of every narcissist coach. You know, it is not the fault of the coach, but the athlete. And, you know, while maybe Kosternaya does need to work harder in the training, he is doing great damage to her reputation, but, you know, it is of no fault of his own. If the team to breed the skaters not sweep the Olympics, it is not the fault of Danny G, the star coach. Well, after this, Aljona Kosternaya deleted her Instagram post thanking her uh, pupils. You see, she had previously been refollowed by Eteri Tuberidza and then blocked her. And when she refollowed Eteri, Eteri never refollowed in kind. You see, now the post thanking the coaches is gone. But we did see today that she got two new tattoos, one of a fox and one of the word lovely, which is her program. It is funny because fans have noticed 
that her lovely choreography at the beginning of the program is the same as the choreography in Twilight. Which is, again, not the fault of Danny G. This is the fault of Kostunaya herself. Clearly, she could not learn other steps. It was like Ashley Wagner doing the same program. W what are we doing? Is it Romeo and Juliet? Is it Samson and Delilah? Yanis Nayo. Yanni Punimayo. It, it is the great performer. Well, Kosternaya also deciding to get lovely. It's very interesting, as this program was allegedly the reason why she's switching from Dim Dubaridza to Angels of Blueshenka. And if you believe that it was all over the program, I will tell you something else about Santa Claus. Let me tell you, because this is a great story and great situation. It was not just about the quad jams or Razanov or how things happen in the group. No, no, it was not anything about this. It was clearly about a lovely choreography and Blueshenka was just disgusted by this work. And now we see the program performed again by Kosternaya. And now she even has a tattoo of it. Which, if you ask me, maybe this will not be the happiest time in her life to remember on her skin. I hope she have a good removal and dermatologist. You know, and in terms of getting a fox, the only thing I can think is Amanda Knox, Foxy Noxy. I am not getting any fox and then traveling to Europe because that will scare the piss out of me. And I do not need Elizabeth Vargas in 2020 coming to visit me in prison. <laughs> okay? And Kasternaya and Amanda Knox are the kind of girl Elizabeth Vargas would love to interview. You know, but we do have words from the great Alexei Zelezhnyakov, master of the boogie woogie, the off-ice trainer of the Iteri Tuberidze group. The great sports that rue decided to interview him. And they said, recently, Aliana Kasternaya expressed her words of support for the Terry Tudbaridza. And then Daniel Gleikenhaus made it clear that this was unnecessary. Do such moments spoil the atmosphere within the team? There is always such a story that the media and fans take everything too close to their hearts. They inflate such things to some incredible sizes. I do not think that this was an offensive phrase towards Aliona. Daniel said the way it is. Aliona also changed in some way made conclusions. Girls are growing up now. You know what the transitional age is? They can somehow be naughty. Also, the new Gleikenhaus is not just going for top medals at the Olympic Games. He is also going for top medals in gaslighting. During this interview, he also touched on the great skaters, Anna Sherbakova, Maya Khonch, Alexander Trusova, and Kamila Valieva. The interviewer asked, Anna and Maya did great quads. Then what are you unhappy with? Of course, with Anna's short program. Her shape at these programs was already better. And the way she trained here, both on the first day and on the day of the short program, did not pretend such a mistake. Pause. This is bullshit. We all saw that they fell on their quads in training. And Daniel Gleikenhaus is saying, oh no, it did not happen. We have video. Knowing her nature and the number of competitions she had at the higher level than the Grand Prix, I understand that she is unlikely to get nervous. We'll figure it out. It's clear that the Lutz Loop Cascade is different from any other cascade, since there is no time for reflection between jumps. For example, when you jump a combination with a tall loop or an oiler or salco, you can always align yourself after landing and even correct the situation with a second jump. It does not work that way with a loop. You can either pick it up right away or you get such a hitch. Of course, I would like her to add a triple toe loop, not a double one, in case of an unsuccessful landing of the lats. Anya said that the free program, she wanted to show a quadruple lats in addition to flip, but the coaches dissuaded her. Daniel, she showed lats here in training and in the warm up, and it was very good. <laughs> Watch the edge. But we haven't jumped lats and flip together in the free program to a music yet. So I decided that this is not worth the risk, because it is harder to do flip as the second quad than the first element. The second quad requires more strength. The percentage of successful execution could fall. If she had done the first quadruple lots and failed the flip, then the rest of the program could have fallen apart. I told Anya that I trust the flip more. It is necessary to do it with a positive grade of execution and then skate the whole program. In these competitions, it was more important to do so. How many quads can Anya do in optimal shape? You saw it for yourself. Here she trained two quads. We can never predict how the preparation between competitions will go. What will happen tomorrow? Now we are planning to try to show lots and flip at the Grand Prix. How it will be? No one knows. 
I like how they say as if we are praying to the skate gods, as if the result of training and preparation and rest has nothing to do with this. But it is great, yes. Let's go visit the Russian fortune teller on YouTube. Will Anya do both quads next competition? Let, let me know. But for Russian nationals, probably even a third quad is necessary? We will see. What about Anya's neck injury? What did her tape mean in Budapest? Now, this is very interesting about asking about injuries because one of the situations where the, the journalist was banned from talking to Team Tudridze at the last competition happened because Eteri Tudridze is supposedly very upset about the amount of talk about injury, especially after the injury to Alexander Trusova, and now there is a neck injury to Anya. Why is Kosternaya not bad? They do not want to be blamed for injuries. This is bad time during the Olympics and perhaps the, they see the parallels with Evgenia Medvedeva in 2018. So all talk about injuries. Notice how he dissuades. Let's discuss. Daniil says, as you can see, there was no plaster in Turin. Nothing worries her. Muscle injuries that athletes have in any part of the body are tape. Yes, because you remember the last time you were skating with a cast on your neck? Yes, it happens all the time. Therefore, if we pay great attention to any tape, it will be possible to write that every athlete is injured every week. Well, that's true. What about Alexander Trusova skipping the Grand Prix in Japan due to a leg injury? Daniil, Sasha's leg hurts. Unfortunately, I haven't been in Moscow for two weeks, so Sergei Vitorovich Dudakov can answer more accurately. We are in touch, but I cannot say anything more specifically about her leg. Pause. He can tell us every detail about how Kosternaya doesn't do her programs, she is not finishing her choreography, but he hasn't been in Moscow, but he knows she's not doing what she's supposed to do. He just knows that Sosha's leg hurts, as though the team would not be having, you know, five alarm fire phone calls about what to do about their star athlete who's supposed to land six quads and now has a stress fracture and they're reportedly discussing surgery. You know, this is very interesting because, you know, suddenly they do not know. No one is talking. What has happened? Will she compete at national? Can she go to European? Has she done enough to go to European? Will it depend how many quads Shevakova does? The coaches clearly are discussing this. They are trying to strategize which girl will get us. Can we kick Tuk Demisheva off the team with three girls? Will Trusova have to go? How do we do this happen? Yes, but according to him, oh no, it just hurts. This is just hurts. And let me tell, they said, can't you specify it? That she has a stress fracture, a fracture of something, or in general that everything is wrong? Daniil, this should be the responsibility of a physician who can provide a professional assessment of the injury. As though he doesn't know. You know, this is great because reportedly members of the Team Dude Breeds the team have said that she wasn't performing for two weeks prior to Skate America and she went out there with minimal practice and then took another week off after she returned. So it has been a problem for a while. So they definitely do know. Now, this is very interesting when they talk about the physician because let me tell you, as my coach Kalina Zmievskaya had when I hurt my ankle, she punched me in the heel and said, I am like doctor. It is not broken. You know, when the coach tells you, you are fine, you are fine. When Terry Dubriza tells Medvedeva today you can jump, she'll be jumping. If Trusova need to jump for a national, we will see her at the national. You know, because the Terry, like Galina, they're like doctor. You know, they're fine. You know, when Oksana Bayou needed to make a million dollars, knee injury, fine. Absolutely no problem. No, this is not dangerous. This is, this is great situation. But they say, but does the doctor have to get approval for comment? This is also true. The last time I saw her on video was from America, where she performed great and took first place. That's all I can say about Sasha now. Yes, because he doesn't know or that Terry doesn't want him to speak. This is great Podka Blushnik behavior. You know, I really enjoy Daniel Glackenhaus. He is really delivering. Every time we think, oh, maybe we just want a Terry. She is the real star. No, Danny G, the man who thinks he is doing all the work as a Terry gets all the Botox. This is a great man. He cannot help it, but allow his opinion to come through. Then they ask, how does Camila Valieva feel? Doesn't she have a feeling that if she does everything, she will become the best everywhere and always? I hope not. We arrived from Canada in a good mood. As soon as the luggage with skates returned, we immediately went on the ice and trained. She is skating the program and preparing for the next Grand Prix. They said Camilla quite rightly gets tens for components, although many critics disagree. Here they go attacking Phil Hirsch. What do you think? I spoke with those professionals with whom we intersected competitions and not with those who are giving interviews somewhere. 
Everyone always comes up and congratulates our girls. When girls perform well, they will say it was a great performance, just like happened with Camila in Canada. It was a great program, a great performance. So the score she got are absolutely logical. Well, ask Paulina Edmonds about this on her podcast. There is still plenty of time before the Olympic Games, but the training plan is already scheduled until February. Are there any training camps planned outside of Moscow, or all the work be at Khrustalny? The entire national team, which will be selected for the Olympics, will have training camps. Until this moment, nothing more is planned. We will work at our rink. One of your skaters, Evgenia Medvedeva, performs in the Ice Age show. Do you manage to work, watch her performances in your free time? Now remember, Medvedeva decided not to use Daniel Gleikenhaus as a choreographer before, and he took her back as a student against his will. But now they are asking, oh, do you manage to watch Genia in your free time? I only see photos, small pieces of performances, both Genia and Alina. No, the schedule is so tight with, with programs, program changes, programs to the gala. There's not enough time for this. I wish Genia to win in the Ice Age. Alina has already won everything. She's hosting the show. You cannot win hosting the show. Well, maybe over Yagudin. <laughs> you know, this is great because I love when people claim they are too busy. With all of this talk about naughty girls, we must pay attention to the good girls, the ones who give nice, boring interviews that don't get scandal in the press. Like Anya Sherbakova. They said, Anya, do you drive away thoughts of the upcoming Olympics? It is too early to talk about it. We are gradually moving towards our goal. I will not deny that I have some thoughts about this, but for now I need to abstract from this and concentrate on training. It is impossible to drive them directly away. I just understand myself that in order to achieve my goals, I still need to work a lot and go step by step thinking about the next competition. These thoughts should not be driven away, but turned over and projected onto training. Now, as the editor of this great blog, I must say, Anya Shrebakova is not just the kind of Angeloka who will have only two shrimp. She's the kind of one that will admit that sometimes she thinks about the Olympics, when she's eating those two shrimp and not three, she's not thinking about the Olympics. She's just thinking about being a good Terry Tudoridze girl. You know, they said, are you constantly working on the psychological work? No, I would probably go crazy if I had these thoughts under control 24 hours a day. I am more relaxed about this. Do you feel increased attention to yourself? Figure skating is in principle popular now. Sometimes one feels that the slightest steps are discussed in the press when news is made from ordinary events. But I try to calmly react and try to make sure that it doesn't bother me in any way. But do you notice? Of course. I am generally curious and follow a lot of things. Do you read the comments? It happens. Can a negative be calm and be smart? Yes, probably. If someone has their own position, it may be adequate. I could also be critical of myself. I do not think that everything is always perfect for me. It happens that someone's opinion coincides with mine. But I think that to improve, I have coaches who will always point out my shortcomings. Trust me on that. I can't take any comments too seriously because there are people who will tell me how to do better and this opinion will become more authoritative to me. You know, this is a very good girl. This is why Anya Sherbakova has been a favorite of Eteri Tudoridze, Daniel Gleikenhaus, and Sergei Dudakov for years. She knows what to say, what not to say, how to say it. She's not getting red hair like Trusova. She's not getting in crazy fights like Kosternaya. This is a very good girl. Champion world, champion Russia. This is the great student, Angeloka. Very nice, very boring, very diligent. This is why Tuberidza does not have great problems with Sherbakova. Except, will Sherbakova perform better than Trusova? And what will happen if Tutamisheva perform well? If Tutamisheva perform well, can we get three girls from Team Tuberidza to the Olympics? Or will it be a showdown between the AAA, Trusova, Sherbakova, Kosternaya, the championship at Russia? Only Ted Barden can know for sure. You know, but we also must look at what Maya Khromich and her recent, uh, decent, you know, media cascade has been happening. You know, Maya is also learning to say only the right things in interviews. She is being a very good girl. They say, are you facing the task of qualifying for the Beijing Olympics? First of all, this is the Russian championship. Honey, like we didn't know. 
I really want to go there with three quadruple jumps, and I want to learn a triple axel. As for the games in Beijing, our results will put everything in its place. Such a perfect answer. Are you psychologically ready for the nationals? It's only a month and a half away. I have been preparing for this from the first day of training in the season. Someone helps to cope with this. Basically, I help myself in this regard. Yes, the coaches tell me, my mother tells me, to a greater extent myself. Does the expectation of the Olympics and the selection for it affect the atmosphere of Roussani? Of course, the competition is huge now, and the atmosphere is like this. We skate, we jump. One jump, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. It's almost endless. But I would not say that this is the intensity of passions. Everything is calm. We just train, work on ourselves. Everyone knows what he needs, said Romich. Well, you know, this is very interesting. Because when your coach gives a negative interview about you and you are getting tattoos and deleting Instagram posts, do you think there are problems in the ring? No, it's very calm. Oh, everything is great. What about when that one skater hit someone else's skates during the off-season? Oh, no, this is very calm. You know, what is calm for a rink in Russia? And what is calm for a rink in New Jersey? Maybe two actually similar things. What is calm for a rink in New Jersey? And what is calm for a rink in Moscow? And what is calm for a rink in, you know, Illinois? Might be very different things. But this is Team Dudberidze. If we are not fighting, <laughs> there is problem. You know, this is why we enjoy this so much. But also, I enjoy this continued narrative that Zhenia Medvedeva is just taking a break from a competition. Remember when Alina Zagitova was just taking a pause herself? You know, but lately they are saying that Medvedeva is becoming a pair skater. And they asked Alexandra Boykova about this. How do you like Zhenia Medvedeva in pair skating? I love to look at Zhenia in any role. I am extremely glad that she is trying a new direction for herself. Unfortunately, I have never seen Virginia live in pairs on the ice, but I can say one thing for sure. When Virginia skates, goosebumps run all over my body. Well, I must say that this is interesting because I had goosebumps when I heard that Medvedeva would like the coaches from Team Tuberiza to attend Ice Age, but she understands they are very busy. Yes, because these coaches are so invested in the girl. They did not give them flowers, leaves to Brian Orser, skates other choreography than Danny G, and then comes back so Derry Tuberizzi could have political favor and 40%. You know, they are just too busy to attend these training on Ice Age. And Yapunin. As we close, we would like to talk about the great champion, Yarina Slutskaya, who played the great friend of Michel Kwon on American TV, but maybe not so much on the Champions on Ice tour. In the Russia press, they said, Two-time world figure skating champion Yarina Slutskaya shared her opinion on men's rhythmic gymnastics. In July, the Olympic champion in ice dancing Tatiana Navka criticized the Spanish gymnast Christopher Benitez and the athlete himself considered that the words of the Russian woman were unacceptable. Yarina, it's unusual for us because rhythmic gymnastics from time immemorial has been a sport for beautiful, fragile, aesthetic girls. If men had a different costume, if there was no imitation of women's gymnastics, then it would be perceived differently. But when a boy comes out in a skirt, he is not wearing a skirt, he is wearing a swimsuit. Well, this is a nightmare, Kashmar. If he dresses up in trousers, a t-shirt, or a t-shirt, if he don't take a woman's ribbon in his hands. You know, I would just like to say that as someone who just made a video of great spiral sequences, you know... I don't know that Ira is such a beautiful, fragile, aesthetic girl. And if I am not, you know, mistaken, they talk about the boy wearing a skirt, and she says, he, they are not wearing a skirt. You know, Ira herself did not wear a skirt at the 2006 Olympic Games. Who is she to talk about beautiful, fragile, aesthetic, anything, if you ask me? It's just my opinion. Well, why is she female? It's just a ribbon. And in ice dancing, men go out in spandex. Well, you also tell me about ballet, that they have tight leotards. Ballet is a classic! It is impossible to compare the Bolshoi Theater with rhythmic gymnastics. This is absurd! I don't want to see a man trying to be like a woman. I don't want to see women in football. I don't want to see women in boxing. Everybody plays football. How many years have women been involved in weightlifting? If this Spaniard came out in trousers and a t-shirt... They would come up with some of their own items for men. 
Women spin a cannonball over their heads, throw a disc. How many years have they been throwing? Well, 40 years. Well, in 40 years, maybe we'll get used to a man in shorts with a ribbon. And no, I don't understand it. I do not mind, albeit, but let's not confuse a god's gift with scrambled eggs. A man should be a man, and a woman should be a woman. Ira, and every time you crying over your artistic impression marks, 2,000 worlds, 2,001 worlds, when you're throwing your bronze medal in the trash at the Olympics, I would like to remind you, Ira, a man should be a man, and a woman should be a woman. Baka.